Uh, just a couple things. You know, I, I, I tell my players all the time that uh, it's not going to be just this one moment where we realize that we're where we want to be. It's going to be a steady process to get to where we need to be. And I, I, I think about during my past experiences as a head coach, as I knew we were getting closer and closer to a, a championship level team, you began to notice certain things. And made note of them in my mind. I don't know if they really are apparent to everybody else. They're definitely not apparent to the outside world. And I had a couple of those moments last week. Um, First, uh, some things that took place away from the football field. We have an academic meeting on, on Thursdays or Fridays where we go through our entire roster with our academic people. And there was three or four guys that when I first got here, I don't know how important the academic side of what we wanted to get across was, was to them. And some of those guys, I'm not going to say they're going to be, uh, you know, dean's, role, dean's, dean's list or anything, but they've uh, made some strides in the academic world that have just been uh, uh, overwhelming, uh, not to just their position coaches, but the team noticed it, you know, because we make a big deal out of it. And that was Thursday. And then Thursday we go out to practice, and we had a full padded practice for 24 periods, which is what will be a, uh, basically like a Tuesday or Wednesday practice during the fall where we want them to practice at a certain tempo, have a certain physicality, and have the results that we want um, to get to where we need to be on a Saturday game day. And we had probably the best practice we've had the entire spring on Thursday. I'm not just giving lip service or coach speak. That's that's sincerity and I think our players felt that we got done with an inside drill and that was an inside drill that that will produce winning football you got through with a red zone goal line segment at the end of practice and you saw kids uh, react and have emotion that will will win football games and then I go into Friday um, and, and go into an alumni event uh, where we have a number of former not just football players but baseball basketball um, men's sports women's sports and, and and people coming up to me and and saying a lot of positive things about where we can go. And that's when I realized that the support was there. And then to be blown away today uh, by 51,000 fans and, and uh, show support to a program that uh, obviously didn't have the year that it wanted in a lot of different ways, uh, those things coupled with what I saw on the field today get me very, very excited. Um, I think we're in a great position where a lot of people in the world of college football, maybe in the outside world, don't think a lot about Arkansas right now, but, but I guarantee they will in short fashion. I really, really like the progress we made. So uh, specifically today with football, uh, we went ones against ones. Um, I, I thought it was a, a, a great way to tell our kids that today was all about business, and they responded very positive. Uh, I like the way things panned out in the first quarter. There was success on both sides of the football. I number, thought our number one offense got clicking at times with, with all the key personnel, uh, obviously converted a touchdown and some significant drives. But the best one is at the end of the half to walk out of there with points on the board with a field goal. Um, and obviously we can work some things. We hadn't worked May Day field goal and some other things we could explore there at the end. But some really positive things uh, offensively and defensively. And then uh, just to get through the whole game injury-free is a very, very positive thing. I think it's because kids are playing extremely hard and are engaged and, and playing very, very smart. Had few penalties. Um, there was one where the lineman was downfield. We got called for one holding. But the decrease in the number of penalties, I believe that's championship-level football from the get-go. There's one thing to, you know, to play a certain way and be able to execute, but if you've beaten yourself before the snap, uh, you don't have a chance, and we were very, very clean in that regard. So positive about that. Uh, I know you're going to ask, so just uh, on the offense side of the ball, I thought Brandon Allen has continued to move forward. Brandon Mitchell uh, does a lot of really good things. You know, he does some things that will set you back at times, but uh, Brandon Allen, I thought, takes some, he played his best football here the last uh, two weeks and, and played really well with, with, a, with a group around him. We've got three senior receivers. We've got Jonathan Williams, Kiro Small, Travis Swanson, who, again, I'll say it, is probably the best center in college football. Uh, just excited about those guys. Didn't get heard back, but uh, Beck made a nice step at, at left tackle and continues to impress us. Um, I'm really excited about that side of the ball defensively. Uh, Chris Smith only played the first quarter. I actually told him he couldn't. If he didn't want to, he didn't play. He, we've had a, a run of some guys with some viral infections, some flu, uh, the last year, two weeks, and Chris has been really sick, hadn't practiced the last half of the week, but he wanted to go today and play with his number one unit. It was good to see him out there, but we backed him out after the first quarter. Uh, I think him and Trey Flowers can be a very, very uh, formidable uh, duo at the defensive end. Really like the group of defensive tackles led by our two seniors and uh, see where they continue to grow. I think our linebackers got better all spring. Uh, I'm really excited to see where Lake and Braylon Mitchell and, and uh, uh, a guy that really emerged at the end, Austin Jones, really did some nice thing was a playmaker in the back end uh, between Gaines and Bennett. I think those are two safeties that can play 
really, really good football. Tevin Mitchell was disappointed to see him. I don't think it's anything too serious. He felt he had he was bothered by his hammy at the beginning of spring. Had a really, really nice last two weeks, but unfortunately tweaked it there on the first play and uh, didn't get him back in there. But got a lot of reps with those other guys. So very excited with the way that Hawker hit the ball. I don't know what his final stats were, I believe, but he just missed the one at 60 yards. Uh, has really hit the ball all year or all spring since I've been around. And what we did is, you know, when we were sitting, I believe a kicker, obviously a lot of his physical, but, you know, more than any other position is a mental game. And when my first sit-down meeting with Hawker, I talked about, well, who's your holder? And he kind of gave me this blank spare and explained to me that he had had two or three holders during the fall a year ago. And I said, I tell you what, buddy, you, you don't know me from Adam. I'm telling you this, you pick your holder. You tell me who your holder is going to be, and he's going to be your holder every day in any way. And you guys got to fit together like a hand in a glove. You got to be great uh, together. And that has continued to mold and move forward and was really, really evident out there today for that to be as fluid as it was. So excited about those guys. Um, hit some nice punts. And then, uh, uh, you know, really like the way my staff worked together today on the sidelines. So a uh, brief synopsis of everything, but uh, uh, that's a little bit of where I'm at. So with that, open up for questions. Coach, you talked about it a little bit, but uh, the crowd yeah. over 51,000, yeah. and it feels pretty good. Jocko, I think it, it, it makes a great statement. It, and you know what? I mean this with all due respect. It doesn't surprise me. Um, what, what these people are in, in the state, and I know people traveled from out of state as well, just the passion and, uh, and the uh, statement that they wanted to make in the world of college football today, and specifically to our players. You know, that's what I said to our players after the game is, look, look, what, look what these people want to do for you. Um, they want to come out and support you and show you what they're all about, and it was very, very evident. Even though he's a walk-on, do you see a role for Patrick Morins? Uh, yeah, you know, Patrick's been a, a nice surprise, a guy that we kind of, uh, I think Bobby Allen kind of recruited him and got him here and uh, did a nice job of bringing him in. Um, and, and, you know, he's very powerful. You can see he's got some, some ability to run the football. He's, he's, he's pretty solid as a blocker as well. Uh, you know, he's like a little Tonka truck, just real, really built strong and tough and physical and got those big old legs turning. I think there's a, a nice combination with him and Kiero and then also the two of them in the backfield possibly together. You want to keep this, the, the quarterback competition going into August. Is that what you want? Well, it, you know, um, obviously you guys have been out there. I mean, Brandon Allen has taken probably uh, not every snap, but the majority of the snaps are the ones. And, uh, he continues to impress us, continues to do some things very, very positive. You know, that play that we got a penalty on where he flushed out to his right, that's something he wouldn't have done three weeks ago. And he's, he's got athleticism. He's got ability. Now he's just got to learn. He doesn't have to stay alive to make a great play. Get the ball out of bounds, you know, play the next down. And, and he's just a, uh, a tremendous, uh, uh, he's a, f a food junkie, you know, obviously growing up with Bobby and at home and uh, all the emphasis on, on, on athletics and, and academics and doing things right. I'm, I think he's continued to grow and be very surprised. Hesitancy to come out with his name, starter, or what, what's the reason? Yeah, I haven't named any starters yet, you know, uh, but I mean, he started this game and he played the entire first half of the one, so um, I think he feels, we feel good about that. But Brandon Mitchell, again, the thing that I, I got to have a conversation with Brandon is just, you know, as a, as a senior, I want to be able to let him know he's a, a contributor and if it's not a quarterback, what we can do and He's a tremendous competitor and a kid that we're very excited about. I love his leadership skills and what he can bring. How different do you think your offense might be based on where you eventually want to go because of your personnel? You know, our, our best play today by far was an, was an off-tackle power, you know, where you lead with the fullback, wrap the big guy, and, and it's just a play that, you know, kind of sets a mode of, of operation. Uh, and uh, kind of a, a, we had a, when I talked about Thursday's practice where we do inside, inside is a period where you do nothing but runs. There's no passes. There's no, nothing pretty about it. It's just a hat on a hat. And, and our guys were champions in that period, offense, defense, and today that same thing showed up. I think as our guys get another eight weeks with Ben Herbert, he's a guy that just, you know, continues. You take a guy like, you know, Chris Smith, who was benching 340 pounds when we got here. He's now repping 400. He's squatting 500 multiple times. Uh, and, and that's just one case in point. Kiro Small, uh, Travis Swanson, uh, all, the, all the offensive and defensive linemen, the way their bodies have changed is going to make us a different team in the fall, let alone anything schematically. How many of your guards cooking some others? I mean, how have they progressed? Looks like they've been out there every snap. Yeah, Bray, you know, is what's neat about him is he obviously played a lot of tackle, and we started him off there. We just thought our best lineup was to get Grady in there and tackle and move Bray, and, uh, Bray inside. You know, Bray is he's a big kid, but he's not real long for tackles. If he played all of, all of his career for us at tackle and played at a level where the NFL was going to ask about him, they'd say, okay, we're going to move you to guard. You know, and I just really believe in putting kids in positions that they can play their best football, and that was definitely a move for him. Um, uh, who else you asking about? Oh, Smothers, yeah. You know, uh, Smothers is, 
uh, made some nice progress. You know what? Smothers has grown as much off the field as he has on the field, taking care of everything, all the details, and it's, it showed up now in football. And then I tell you, Cordell Boyd, um, Cordell's right, right there nipping on their heels, and I think Cordell athletically and physically can be a really good player, so it gives us a little bit of depth there. And then because of the injury to Hurd, you know, Beck has really shown us that he, he, he might have a guy that is going to be able to play at that position. We didn't really know that going in in, fall, in the spring. It looked like you had more uh, move, move the ball success on offense than you had in the other scrimmages and double digit yards plays. Great, great for offense? Question. Yeah, no, I think it's, I think it's great. Um, when we go good against good, somebody's got to give, you know, so I'm just glad that uh, uh, it, 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 we were able to move the chains, you know, and we'll have explosive plays. We've got to make some big hits, which we were able to do, but our offense is based upon moving the ball, you know, having success on first down, on second down. Uh, you know, you've got to get half of it back for third down, and third down put yourself in a manageable situation. And def defensively, we want to make them earn every inch. We don't want to give up any freebies. So even if, you know, I gave uh, a lot of credit. There was a play where Austin Jones uh, ran down a play from behind on a long pass play. And if he didn't make that play, there's a Mike linebacker running down a, a wide receiver. If he didn't make that play, they score a touchdown. We never... We never get a chance to make that third down stop, which gave them a field goal instead of a touchdown. Didn't feel that way to you, though, that the offense moved Not really. No, no. You know, I, I'm sure statistically I'll look into it a little bit more, but I like the, the flow. It seemed like we were always changing field positions, which was huge. We weren't staying on one end, which means you got dominance on one side of the ball. These big backs, they really fit what you're trying to do. Yeah, I, I, I would say that, you know, Jonathan Williams, um, uh, I knew who he was. I knew who on the roster, but uh, he was the first kid sitting on my office uh, on my first day on the job. I mean, he was excited to... Uh, to have us coming into the program. And then, you know, Cody Walker was probably on, on the offensive side one of the best pleasant surprises. I mean, he is a big physical. Um, he's incredible. You didn't really see it today and it'll never pop up, but he's really got great pass pro, which means he'll be great for us on third down and, and, and use him systematically. But uh, those are two big backs that are very possible. As you can see, Nate Holmes uh, did a lot of good things. Uh, love him to death. I suspended him from the first half, didn't let him play uh, because he needs to get himself in line academically. And I uh, want to make him understand that where we're at. And uh, he, God bless him, he's done everything we asked him to do. Is, he's done a tremendous job. And, and if he closes out the next three weeks the way I think he's capable of doing, we got a chance for a nice little tandem back there. How many plays did you have in the playbook today? Plays in the playbook? Um, you know, we, we uh, probably didn't get the full amount that we worked on, but the last two weeks of spring ball, I really, really hit our coaches up on. You know, we came back from spring break, went through two weeks of, of progression and moving forward. The last two weeks, I wanted to get great at, at what we're going to hang our hat on. Um, so, you know, and offensively, I would say run game probably our bread and butter, about four or five plays, you know, a zone blow plays, inside, or a tight side and split side, uh, the power play, the counter play, a little bit of fullback belly play for Kiero, you know, um, some, some toss and parameter plays that will be good for, you know, uh, Travis Swanson uh, on, on plays where we're going to pull the center out and get up on people. I mean, he's, he's very impressive, and you can't do that with a normal center. He's gifted in a way that uh, allows us to do that, and that can be a very difficult play to defend. What position do you want to see the uh, most improvement position? Most position? Bo, I think easily offensively the O-line play, um, the, the way that we want to play, uh, you know, the way that we're going to have to play uh, to fit our playbook. I mean, there's no doubt that that was uh, a position that grew. I will say this in a close second. I don't mean to stretch the answer, but wide receivers, the way we caught the ball um, today was another good example. I thought a number of guys showed up. I've been continually to be impressed with, with Keon Hatcher. I would say Demetrius Wilson has had the best spring over all the wide receivers. Uh, Mikhail McKay flashes at times. I think uh, 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 Julian Horton um, flashes at times. I mean, I'm just excited about that group and the progress. Defensively, just because I've seen it and I've witnessed it, Charlie Partridge is the, was one of the best coaches I've ever been around. Defensive line-wise, we really made some big jumps there. Um, Trey Flowers and, and uh, Chris Smith uh, are going to be able to uh, thank Coach Partridge. They're going to be NFL players that are going to be exceptional because of the way they're gifted in a way athletically, but they're very, very... Uh, well coached and, and, and excited about that position. Uh, I think in the back end it was kind of what I thought I thought, I thought I saw, but I will say this, linebackers, Randy's done a nice job. We were really thin there. Uh, you know, some guys that are playing there that no one really told us about, so they were just kind of scout team guys, and, and now they're starting for us. I don't know if that's good or bad, but uh, guys that are making progress. How would you just kind of sum up your emotions and also how you're kind of blending with this new group of guys? Uh, you know, you can ask them that, uh, but I... I uh, I, as a staff, to work with these guys is a great honor. I'm truly blessed to, to, to be able to put these guys together. And, you know, those weren't the first nine guys I wrote down on a piece of paper. It was kind of a, 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 a back and forth, you know, who was 
who was going to be able to uh, interview with me, who wanted to have an interest, and uh, Jeff gave me the support financially to do certain things. And to come to where I am, I had no idea it could be this good. I mean, just just blown away. And then to, to be around these players, I'm not meaning disrespectful for you guys, but I can't wait to go shower and go. We got uh, 450 parents um, and family members that are waiting to visit with us. I, I didn't have the benefit of being in their home. I didn't have a chance to sit down in their living room and learn, you know, who made them who they are. I didn't have a chance to learn the trials and tribulations that they had in childhood and, and their family has. I didn't get a chance to be in their home that they call, uh, you know, home when they go home away from here. Uh, so to go over and meet these parents. All my position coaches are going to be over there and uh, truly get an understanding of what family is all about. That, that, that's, that's pretty cool. You, you led the team out there on the field today. Uh, not the first time you've done that. It's not a Saturday in the fall, but what did that feel like today? Yeah, well, I didn't know how to go to the 50. I about called for a trainer. Um, I thought my dash was about 10, 10 to 20 usually. Um, uh, but it, it was uh, fun to do that. There's a lot of things involving the game that we'll have a conversation with. I think you got one of the greatest environments, obviously, to get 50,000, 51,000 for a spring game. Now we want to put a product out there that's worthy of that, but also what I've learned in some environments and some stadiums, you can do some neat things with the crowd and interaction. And you know, I'm not a big smoke guy, so I got to kind of—I don't know about that one. But 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 um, you know, running out through smoke's never been high on my priority. You know, uh, but uh, you know, if the kids are into it and it's part of our tradition, I'm willing to embrace it. But I think there's a lot of things moving forward that'll be great. He's good. Uh, the last one, just from an injury standpoint, uh, uh, could have probably gone today. Just thought the chance. And he'd be about you know three quarter speed. We got a couple good DNs. Didn't want to put him in that position. So to get out of this camp as healthy as we were is just off the charts. All right. Yeah.